buggery, 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 get up on your feet. Well now, hello everybody. Welcome to another edition of the DW Show and this might be the best one yet. I'm not sure because we certainly had one of the best one yet races Saturday night, I thought. Now, I guess I'm a gaper. You can call me a gaper if you want to, but I love exciting finishes. You know, whether it's Talladega, eight wide, uh, you know, Darlington, wherever, I like a good close finish. And man, did we have one Saturday night. Plus, don't tell anybody, but I like a, I like a little action after the race though with too. You know, the guys getting into it, trying to maybe get up in each other's face, if you can catch the guy that you're trying to get up in his face car as it drives away, hilarious. The whole ending to that race was hilarious, except for one guy, and that's Regan Smith. And folks, what an incredible story. Uh, Regan is a great guy. Remember Talladega a couple of years ago when he had that win taken away from him because he dipped below the yellow line and gave it to Tony Stewart? Felt bad for Regan that day. You know, put him in second, I could understand, but man, they put him at the tail end of the lead lap. The guy's been kicked around. He's been at DEI. I think he was at Bobby Ginn. He's had different opportunities. But Furniture Row, they got it going on. It's taken them a while to get there, but they got great resources. Marnie Visser, uh, the owner of the company, the team, great guy. He's just invested slowly and surely built this team into now a winning team. And uh, Regan drove an a, a amazing race. You know, what do we say about Darlington? It's a driver's track. So if you win at Darlington, you must be a pretty darn good driver. That's what I say about Regan. Saturday night, car was clean. He didn't have, it wasn't beaten up. He hadn't driven into people. He hadn't knocked the wall down. He drove a really smooth, consistent Darlington race. At the end of the night, it came down to pit strategy. And, and what they did in the, pit, in the pits, Pete Rondo made a perfect call. Told Regan to stay out on that last caution. And everybody else came in. And everybody else got two tires. And everybody else came back out. And old Regan, he is a sitting duck. You know they're going to jump on him like a grasshopper on a June bug. Or is it a June bug on a grass? Well, anyway, whichever way it is. Um, but anyway, they restarted that race. And I thought, man, Carl will sail by Regan. And I think Carl thought the same thing. I think Carl took his competition for granted. I don't think he took his competition serious at that point. I think he thought he had the best car, got two tires. I'll jump on this cat. I got this thing in the bag. By the way, Carl, congratulations on the new baby boy, Michael. Uh, my brother said, nice name. But anyway, uh, everything was going good. And uh, old Carl thought he had that race in the bag, I believe. But in fact, Regan was able to hold him off. And the last restart, when the green-white checkered, Brad Keselowski jumps in there, gets up behind Regan. They get a great start. Carl didn't go so good. Regan takes the lead. Brad kind of runs interference, trying to keep Carl up there out of the, you know, where he can't get a run on, on Regan, and it worked. Brad got a third. Regan won. Everybody's happy. Did I say everybody was happy? <laughs> everybody was happy until the race was over with. Coming off turn four. You know, we got three wide. That never works very well at Darlington. I've seen that not be very successful. And it wasn't again Saturday night. Clint Boyer goes in the wall. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick are banging into each other. Kyle Busch gets mad at Kevin Harvick because they made a lot of contact on the last lap. So they come off turn four. They're three wide. I don't, that's not a good idea. It never works. Boyer into the wall. Kevin and and the Kyle are banging off each other. Kyle gets mad. Kevin goes by. Kyle whacks Kevin and turns him in the wall. You know, we've seen that a lot the last year and a half. I don't like it. I, I, don't, I think it's wrong. And I think what Kyle did, he should not have done. But uh, that's kind of where the sport is right now. Boys have at it. They had at it. And also, they had had at it when they got back to the pits. Now, this is where everything went bad. Kevin comes around, and he's mad at, at Kyle, and he should have been, and he's going to get Kyle. Uh, Kevin has a history of that. If you remember uh, Bristol, I think, a few years ago, climbing over cars, Richmond, a lot of different places. Kevin is, he kinda, he's high strung, I have to say. Love the guy. Love him. I love, his, I love his passion. I love the way he'll go after somebody. But, uh, you know, 
I, I'm a fan, and uh, I'm not NASCAR. I love it. Uh, NASCAR, not so much. Uh, so they they are keeping a close eye on this situation because we got it on TV. <laughs> it's a good thing about TV, or maybe it's a bad thing about TV. But anyway, we're following these two cats around because we know there's going to be something to happen. Sure enough, they get on pit road, and Kevin's chasing, look like Keystone Cops. Kevin's chasing Kyle around, trying to get, get to him. They finally get stopped on pit road, and Kevin hops out of his race car, and he goes back, and he's going to get... Get, try to get in the car, get in, uh, get in Kyle's face, and Kyle drives off. Except there was a problem. Kevin's car was right in front of Kyle's. And so when Kyle took off, he pushed Kevin's car out of the way. Now here's where it gets kind of fun and interesting. Uh, Kyle couldn't back up because in all that chasing around, the reverse gear in your car is a very fragile gear. We don't use it very often. And so if you abuse it very much, you can rip it right out of the car. And that's what happened to Kyle. I know this for a fact, and I'm making it up. I'm not defending Kyle. But the, when the race was over with, they took his transmission out of his car, took it apart, and, and verified that reverse was torn up. So he couldn't back up. Here's this guy coming at him, and he's hot. He's got, he's got his helmet on, and steam's coming out under his helmet. And so Kyle sees this. He kind of knows the history of Kevin. He said, I got to get away from this guy. And so he pushes Kevin's car out of the way. Well, here's what happened. When Kevin got out of his car, the switches on the, are on the dash panel, right, right on the left corner of the dash panel. When Kevin got out of the car, he hit the ignition switch. They're toggle switches. He hit the ignition switch and turned it on. So when Kevin got out of his car and went back to Kyle, when Kyle pushed Kevin's car, the ignition was on, gave it a little shove, it was in gear, and the engine fired up. And when the engine fired up, as I said on Saturday night, I'll say it again, the dead gum thing took off. The dead gum thing took off. Looked like somebody had gotten out of their car and left it in drive and the thing just rolled off. It's kind of what happened. When he pushed it, the ignition was on, the engine fired up. And the engine fired up and the thing just took off and turned left into the wall. Now, Kyle didn't know it was going to do that. I wouldn't have never thought about it doing that. Kevin didn't know it was going to do that. NASCAR didn't know it was going to do that, but it did that. Now, here's the thing. we got to live in the real world. We can't live in the what if. Nobody got hurt. It was kind of comical. And they took it on into the garage. Well, that's where the problem is. Oh, NASCAR does not, they will not condone anything on pit road. You want to play bad guy on the racetrack, you guys want to police other, each other on the racetrack, they're okay with that. That's what boys have it, it's all about. But when you get on pit road, that's, that's a no war zone. You can't start doing things in the pits, pushing cars around, taking chance, getting, jeopardizing people's safety. They will not tolerate that. And that's where the fines came from. What happened on pit road? Now what happened on the racetrack? That's between the drivers. If Kevin and Kyle want to get in each other's face about hooking me out on the racetrack, NASCAR's okay with that. That's where you police each other. Drivers will they'll handle that themselves. But when you come inside the, on the pit road or in the garage and you start doing reckless things and dangerous things, that's where the penalty came from. And I totally agree. You can't do that. It, was, it, it turned out, as I said, to be kind of comical, but it could have been disastrous. So, what a great weekend. Fun. The old lady in black, she was... She was at her best. Those walls, I mean, they were absolutely worn out when the race was over with. Everybody's car pretty much had some kind of damage on the right side. But an exciting finish, another first-time winner. Great benefits for Regan Smith and his team during the All-Star race. So many benefits go to winning uh, that race on Saturday night. One of the crown jewels, Daytona, Charlotte, and Darlington. And Regan Smith won Day uh, Darlington. And guess who won Daytona? Don't forget, Trevor Bain. Trevor Bain, first-time winner at Daytona, one of the crown jewels. Regan Smith, first-time winner, Southern 500, one of the crown jewels. That's just how this sport is right now. Anybody can win. They got great resources, Furniture Row does. They got cars from uh, RCR. They got ECR engines. And they got a good crew chief. They got a great driver and they won the Southern 500. Congratulations, and let's go to Dover.